this is joint work with my former PhD students, Ramazan Erjan and Mehmet Ünlü. So Ramazan got his PhD in 2018 and Mehmet uh, received his PhD in 2014. And Mehmet is in Rize, Turkey and Ramazan is currently in St. Louis, the United States. And uh, well, uh, my uh, research in integrable evolution equations uh, was just by pure chance. And I will explain to you. So I started with the Marshenko inversion method, even in my thesis. So, uh, so here's uh, the outline of my talk. So even though we have all the experts here, well, I will just introduce inverse scattering problems by using a simple example. And then I will indicate how the Marshenko method is used to solve inverse scattering problems. And then I will mention this method so-called the inverse scattering transform method to solve integrable evolution equations. And I will indicate how the Marshenko method is also used to solve integrable evolution equations. And my concentration in this case will be on the integrable evolution equation or system known as the derivative NLS system. And then uh, I will indicate how the Marshenko method can be used to solve the derivative NLS system. And well, it's possible to do the reductions in systems and come up with one single equation in one unknown. So I will indicate how the reduction is done well, perhaps I can just omit this, but it's also possible to do some similar things and apply the Marshenko method to solve the semi-discrete version of the derivative NLS system. And if I have the time, I will just uh, do some illustration and indicate how Mathematica can be used, for example, to get explicit solutions. So here's a, the illustration of an inverse scattering problem. So this is, as you probably know, is the half line Schrodinger equation. And here's the potential V of X and uh, K squared is the spectral parameter. Psi is the wave function. So prime is the second derivative. This is on the half line. And uh, if we assume that the potential decays fast enough at infinity, then uh, when this term is zero, there will be two solutions uh, proportional to e to the ikx and e to the minus ikx. And uh, so this solution has the physical interpretation. That's why it's called a physical solution. So this is a plane wave moving from plus infinity onto the potential. And this is e to the ikx is the plane wave moving in the positive x direction. So you send a plane wave onto the potential and it is scattered, it comes back as a reflected wave. So, well, we can inter interpret this as the scattering function or the scattering matrix, even though this may not be literally a matrix. The scattering problem, the direct problem is if you know the potential V of X for all X can be determined scattering function for all values of the spectral parameter. And the inverse scattering problem is just uh, the converse. If you know the scattering function for all values of the spectral parameter can be determined the potential for all X values. Well, there are certainly many other inverse scattering problems for differential equations, difference equations, and systems of differential equations and systems of difference equations. And it's possible to have a parameter here, not an independent variable, 
a parameter t that we can interpret as time. If the potential depends on time, if you have v of x t, then uh, that parameter will show up also in the scattering matrix here or scattering function. So then the inverse scattering problem becomes given s of kt for all k, but at any time t, can you determine the potential for all x values at that particular t? And if there is smoothness, then uh, you can say, given s of kt for all k for all t, can you determine the potential v of xt for all x for all t? Well, now here's uh, the summary of the Marshenko method. Well, uh, now Marshenko is now 100 year, uh, years old. So as you know, he's uh, a great mathematician from Ukraine, but because of the war, uh, well, uh, the last time I heard uh, he's safe because he was moved from Kharkov to a nearby city and staying with some friends. Well, if you can establish a one-to-one -one correspondence between the potential and the scattering matrix, uh, then we can solve the inverse scattering problem. And as, as you know, Marshenko in 1950 established a method to obtain the potential from the scattering data from scattering matrix by establishing an integral equation, which he called the fundamental equation. But now it is known as the Marshenko integral equation. So basically what you do, you subtract the large K asymptotics of uh, the scattering matrix from the scattering matrix itself so that you can take the Fourier transform. So you take the Fourier transform and from the K domain to the Y domain, and then you use that Fourier transform as the inverse in this particular equation, well, which is a standard a second uh, fret, uh, fret home integral, uh, integral equation of the second kind. And it is known as the Marshenko equation because the both the kernel and the non-homogeneous term are related to each other and constructed from the scattering data. And so once you solve this, then you recover the potential from the solution to the Marshenko integral equation by replacing y by x. Now it's possible to develop the Marshenko equation for some other differential equations, difference equations, systems of differential equations and systems of difference equations, but there are also very other, uh, many other uh, such equations where there's no Marshenko method, or there may be some similar method, but uh, it may not be the most suitable. So here's the outline of the inverse scattering transform method to solve initial value problems for integrable nonlinear systems. And so if the method can be applied, then the corresponding nonlinear system of differential equations or difference equations will be called integral. So there should be a, a linear system, perhaps an ordinary differential equation for a nonlinear partial differential equation. So there should be an association and uh, the solution to the nonlinear system will appear as a coefficient, as a potential in the linear system. And uh, as you know, the idea behind solving the initial value problem for a nonlinear system of partial differential equations will be, I know the initial value of the solution and I'm trying to find the solution so that the solution will obey, will satisfy the nonlinear system of partial differential equations. And when t equals zero, it will reduce to the initial value. 
And the inverse scattering transform developed in 1967 uh, works as follows. So you break this single but more difficult step into three steps. So first you associate with the initial potential, the scattering data at t equals zero. So by solving the direct scattering problem. And then um, you assign a time evolution and this time evolution for the scattering data is rather simple <clears throat> and it is unique and it is determined by the time evolution uh, in the nonlinear case of the initial value. And then you take advantage of the one-to-one -one correspondence between the potential at t equals, at any time t and the potential, uh, the scattering data at any time t by solving the inverse scattering problem. And amazingly, what you get, this satisfies both the nonlinear system and it reduces to the initial value. So here's uh, how to extend uh, the inverse scattering transform by using the Marshenko method. So here's the, the inverse scattering transform method. And what you do, so remember, you take the Fourier transform of the scattering data, you get uh, the kernel and also the non-homogeneous term in the Marshenko system. So instead of doing the time evolution of the scattering data, do the time evolution for the Marshenko kernel. And then uh, you use a Fourier transform, you use the inverse Fourier transform, and then, uh, well, you get the potential. In fact, uh, we can even erase this. So you can just combine the inverse scattering transform and the Marshenko method as follows. So given the initial potential, construct the initial Marshenko kernel, do the time evolution for the Marshenko kernel and solve the Marshenko equation, the time evolved Marshenko equation. And from the solution to the time evolved Marshenko equation, get the, the potential, time evolved potential. And this will be then your solution to the integrable evolution equation. And in this case, I'm interested in working on the following integral evolution equation. It is called the derivative NLS equation. But I have three parameters in the linear system, even though there will be two parameters in the nonlinear system. So the parameters are, I have A, I have B, and I have kappa. So normally they are chosen as either integers or real parameters, but uh, it's possible to choose them as complex parameters. And here's the corresponding linear system. So lambda is the spectral parameter, Q and R, so Q and R, so they depend on X and T. So they are the potentials. And here's the wave function. And as, as you can see, when Q and R are zero or when they vanish at infinity, so you get that this equation where you have minus I lambda and you have I lambda, where lambda is a spectral parameter in the diagonals of the coefficient matrix. And uh, one interesting thing about this equation is that the potentials are proportional to, so they contain the spectral parameter as a multiplicative factor in the form of square root of lambda. But certainly you can use say zeta for the square root of lambda, and then you can use square of zeta here instead of lambda. And uh, so here's the derivative NLS system. In fact, uh, some special cases, if you use a 
zero for A, zero for B, and uh, one for kappa. This is known as the derivative NLS system one, or the kaup nouvel system. And if you use uh, one here, one here, zero here, so this is known as the derivative NLS system two. Or yeah, you may have the derivative NLS system three, but I'm not interested in studying all these separately because if I do that, uh, I mean, uh, my life would not be enough because uh, especially considering the fact that uh, A, B, and kappa can take any complex values. So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be using the Marshenko method for all these, for this linear system, or equivalently, I can just use the Marshenko method in one special case, and then just use the transform to any other cases. So, uh, so in this case, I'm just gonna use the Marshenko method by choosing A and B to be zero and kappa to be one, and then obtain the potential in the simplest case. And then by using these transformations, I will be able to get the solutions to the general derivative analysis system. And then there is also this uh, key quantity, but uh, I will show you how to construct that by using the Marshenko method. So here's the linear system associated with the derivative NLS system, which is the derivative NLS system one. And in the simplest case, the coefficient matrix contains two potentials proportional to the spectral parameter or the square root of the spectral parameter. Well, in case the spectral parameter is used as a complex spectral parameter, so these will be the principal value of the square root function. And the corresponding derivative NLS system is rather simple. And this is called the derivative NLS system, nonlinear equation, and nonlinear uh, uh, Schrodinger equation. Because if you look at this, so this part, if you choose this, the, if you omit the nonlinear part, this is nothing but the uh, Schrodinger equation, the time dependent Schrodinger equation. That's why this is called the nonlinear Schrodinger equation. And here you take the derivative, that's why it's called the nonlinear derivative nonlinear Schrodinger equation. In fact, uh, there is also the nonlinear Schrodinger equation and you have the same linear part as here and here you have the nonlinear part. And as you can see, here you have the derivative NLS system and here you have the nonlinear Schrodinger system. And here the contrast is that you have the potential proportional to the square root of the spectral parameter. And here you have the potential. Here you have the other potential, the other potential. And in the derivative NLS system, you have the potential depending on the spectral parameter. And well, recently uh, with my uh, two collaborators, we, we were able to derive this uh, Marshenko integral, integral equation. In fact, uh, we are hoping that uh, we can use the same idea to derive the Marshenko equation for other linear systems where the Marshenko equation does not exist. And in fact, I will make a contrast. So let me just uh, go to the next page. So this is the Marshenko integral equation, but that associated with the nonlinear Schrodinger equation system. So this is well known and obtained by Ablowitz, Kaup, Newell, uh, and Seeger. So here, so this is like K of XY, this is like f of xy, and this is like the matrix k of xy times f of xy. Now let's make a contrast with the previous. So the only difference is that here, so everything is the same except that here I have 
i times the derivative of the kernel. Here I have minus i times the derivative of the kernel. In fact, all these other parts are the same. So let's make a take a look at that, this again. So the only difference is the presence of minus i and the derivative, and here i and the derivative. So let's take a look at this. So the only difference is here. So here, uh, well, the Marsh, uh, the kernels, the Marshenko kernels are constructed as follows. So the only difference is that I have the reflection coefficient here and uh, I have square root of lambda. And then here I have the bound state information. And here I have the other reflection coefficient and I have the square root of lambda here and the bound state information. So let's also make a comparison between the Marshenko kernel in the derivative NLS system and the Marshenko kernel for the NLS system. So here, so, and as you can see, everything is the same. And the only difference is that I, I have square root of lambda here, square, square root of lambda here. And uh, the bound state information is expressed in terms of a pair of matrix triplets. And there are many advantages of doing that. So by doing that, I can take care of uh, bound states, any number of bound states, any number of bound, uh, multiplicities. And again, here's the Marshenko system for the NLS system. So again, the bound state uh, information can be handled by using a pair of matrix triplets. Now, here's the recovery uh, by using the Marshenko method to solve the derivative NLS system. So remember, we have K1, K1 bar, K2, and K2 bar in the Marshenko system for the derivative NLS system. So if you look at this, so the unknowns, so this matrix contains four scalar unknowns. And uh, so what I do, you give me the reflection coefficient and the bound state information, and I obtain these two quantities, and I use them here in the non-homogeneous term and also in the kernel, and I solve this and I get these four quantities. And then I construct the two potentials and this exponential term explicitly. So, mm -hmm. and uh, in the reflectionless case, it turns out that the, the Marshenko system has separable kernel and you can use linear algebra to get explicit solutions. In fact, uh, those solutions will be closed form solutions and it's possible to obtain compact formulas expressed explicitly in terms of matrix potentials. And you can use any size matrix uh, triplets. So as a result, you get all kinds of explicit solutions. And uh, while matrix exponentials are compact way of expressing those explicit solutions in terms of exponentials, polynomials, and trigonometric functions. So you can just unpack them and you can express your solutions, explicit solutions in terms of elementary functions involving polynomials, exponential functions, and trigonometric functions. And then you can animate those solutions. So this is, so I'm omitting the details, but I'll tell you that, so we have a recent, uh, 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 archive uh, paper preprint. So the details can be found there. And here's a contrast. Oh, I'm sorry. Here's how you do the reductions. So in case in the derivative NLS system, remember you have two potentials. So let's take a look at them. So you have Q and R. And in case these two are related 
to each uh, to each other through complex conjugation or negative complex conjugation, then you get it's possible to reduce the system to one single differential equation, and it will be in one unknown. So when you have that, <clears throat> in that case, the Marshenko equation reduces to a single Marshenko equation. And this is exactly <clears throat> the Marshenko equation encountered for the derivative NLS system. Again, except that you have I here and you have the derivative here. And uh, in that case, you only have one reflection coefficient because the other reflection coefficient becomes plus or minus of this reflection coefficient. And then look how simple this is to recover the potential. There is only one unknown in the Marshenko equation, K1. And then you only use K1 to recover the potential. And then in the reflectionless case, when the reflection coefficient is zero, you have this kernel and that kernel is separable. And uh, so you can separate in Z and Y. And if you use this in the kernel and in the non-homogeneous term, then you get all explicit solution solutions. And in fact, uh, you get the explicit solution in terms of matrix exponentials, but then that gives you all kinds of explicit solutions because you can choose the size of the matrix triplet any way that you want. Say, choose A to be 10 billion by 10 billion. And uh, with any multiplicity then you're gonna get uh, an explicit solution because you have the explicit solution formula. But if you try to express those, if you try to express those in terms of elementary functions, those uh, that formula will give you perhaps a, a 10 billion page long solution, explicit solution, explicit, but totally useless, even though it is explicit. And uh, now, case that you have the reflectionless case. So here's the procedure to get the explicit solutions. So, so for the system, so you have two matrix triplets, and then you use input. You use these as input to the Marshenko system, and you get the Marshenko solutions, and. Uh, from the solutions, you obtain the potentials explicitly. So you construct all these solutions explicitly in terms of the matrix triplets. And since uh, the potentials are complex valued, so you can animate the absolute values and then uh, you observe those soliton-like solutions. In fact, uh, you can use either mathematical or maple and uh, you can use these as input and then get uh, all the animations. In fact, uh, with my collaborators, we prepared some uh, animations and I'll show you some samples. And uh, now here I can just omit the steps, but uh, basically we use the following steps from the matrix triplet, we construct two constant matrices M and M bar by solving these linear systems, or you can express those linear systems explicitly as integrals, explicit uh, integrals constructed uh, from A, B, C, and A bar, B bar, C bar matrix triplets. And then you construct these matrices that are functions of X and T. Here you have the identity matrix. And then, uh, you're able to solve the Marshenko system explicitly because the separability, separability of the uh, kernel. And then uh, you have the solutions to the, uh, uh, the either integrable evolution equation known as the derivative NLS system explicitly in terms of 
these two matrix triplets. Now, if you make a contrast and in the derivative NLS case, so this is the beauty about it. So this is how you get the two potentials. And uh, so the only difference is that, uh, so you have this exponential term and this exponential term. So this is the difference between the, the NLS system, the derivative NLS system and NLS system. So you only have this and this in the NLS system. So, and also it's possible to use here uh, in case you have the reflectionless case, you can get again explicit solutions by using a pair of matrix triplets, and then you can do animations. Well, uh, so let me look at my, my time. Uh, oh, well, I still have time. Well, it's possible to do all these in the discrete case. In fact, uh, uh, recently, uh, as I mentioned with uh, one of my former PhD students, we established the Marshenko equation for the discrete system. And that Marshenko equation, now, it, uh, instead of you having, having the integral equation, you have the summation. And here's the linear system and Z is the spectral parameter and uh, the corresponding derivative NLS system. Now it's semi-discrete. So you have N, the integer N taking integer values and that time here. So you have the time derivative. So the dot, the over dot is the time derivative. And uh, so it's, so we had that, we have developed a Marshenko system for this. And here's the corresponding linear, uh, I'm sorry, corresponding nonlinear uh, Schrodinger system. So this is the derivative nonlinear Schrodinger system. This is the nonlinear Schrodinger system. Sometimes this is known as the oblowitz ladik system. And as you can see, it is simpler. So this is the integrable semi-discrete nonlinear Schrodinger system. And here you have the integrable semi-discrete derivative nonlinear Schrodinger system. So we have developed the Marshenko method for this. And uh, now here's the Marshenko method for that derivative NLS system. In fact, here the Marshenko method it looks exactly the same as the Marshenko method for the NLS system. So let's make a contrast. So please take a look at this and take a look at this. They are identical. So the two are identical. And uh, in the derivative NLS system, now you have the reflection coefficients and you have the bound state information, again, expressed in terms of a pair of matrix triplets. Well, uh, ironically, uh, uh, Alvarez and uh, uh, his group uh, also has the Marshenko method for the semi-discrete uh, derivative NLS system. But uh, to put it blunt, uh, bluntly, their Marshenko system looks very ugly because they did not use the proper way of obtaining the Marshenko system. So in some sense, uh, they're using the wrong data to get uh, the correct Marshenko system. They insist on a Marshenko system like this, where the summation is from n plus one to infinity, but uh, the data that they have, because they did not use the proper formulation, the data that they're using is more related to uh, the left. Uh, so this is the right scattering coefficient. So the data that they're using is related to the left scattering coefficients. And, uh, and the, the reason is the following. So here N is on this side and n plus one is on this side. So 
this is the proper way to analyze the Marshenko equation if your Marshenko equation will be running from uh, say n plus one or n to infinity. But there is another Marshenko equation that goes from minus infinity to n say. So in that case, you can just put n plus one here and here. So, but uh, a lot of mathematicians use uh, by habit use n plus one here and here, and then they only use uh, in the Marshenko system, they, they try to use the integral from x to infinity or the summation from n to infinity. So as a result, in the discrete case, they get something very ugly. So even though mathematically correct, but uh, it is too complicated, unnecessarily complicated. Okay. And as I mentioned, uh, uh, it's possible to de develop the, the, do the same thing for the NLS system. And again, so you have a very beautiful theory. Uh, if you use here, the summation from n or n plus one to infinity. So you get something uh, very nice, but otherwise you're gonna get something complicated in the discrete case. Okay, so here's the recovery in the semi-discrete NLS case. So the solution from the solution to the Marshenko system, it's possible to get the potentials uh, and uh, now, because I had a very simple uh, Marshenko system in the derivative NLS case, uh, I pay the price, even though the potentials are obtained explicitly, then the expressions for the potentials in terms of the solution to the Marshenko system, it's a little bit more complicated. But, but again, you can just uh, have explicit solution formulas and animations. Uh, so, well, uh, I've come to the end of my talk. And then as I mentioned, I'm gonna show you a mathematical animation, also a mathematical notebook to solve uh, for uh, to, by using the Marshenko method. So here are a few references. Well, certainly there are so many references, but uh, these are the ones related, related to me. Uh, so uh, with my former PhD students, we published a paper in 2019 in inverse problems. So this was related to, so we analyzed uh, mostly the direct scattering problem for a first order system related to the derivative NLS system. And this is the discrete version. And uh, now the Marshenko method developed for the derivative NLS system is available as an archive preprint. In fact, uh, we just uh, put uh, this in the archive a few days ago. And uh, this is the paper by Kaup and Newell. So I can show you, they were the first one to try to solve the derivative NLS system. And uh, in the paper by Olber and Sokolov, they combined all these derivative NLS systems uh, by using two parameters. And uh, well, Toshida, so this is a Japanese mathematician. Uh, so he's been doing a lot of good work. And uh, so he has, uh, so I suggest that you look at uh, his, his work. So let me just uh, stop my talk here and uh, uh, I said, do I have enough time? Yeah, you have enough time. Yes. Okay. Just so let me just show. So let me just show you the mathematical notebook that we prepared. So here, I have the mathematical notebook, and uh, well, it takes a little bit of time. So let me just uh, and then make it larger, increase the size. So uh, are, you, are you able to see uh, Aicha? So hopefully if you, you're able to see. Yeah, we are now uh, totally okay with the screen. 
Right. So the, all that, the idea behind using this mathematical notebook is that I'm gonna be providing as input the appropriate parameters and I'm gonna get explicit solutions. So for uh, little a, little b and kappa, well, we used P1, P2 and kappa one. So if I choose these three parameters differently, I'm gonna get, for example, if I choose uh, as zero, zero, one, I'm gonna get the solution to the derivative NLS one, which is known as the uh, uh, Kaup Newell system. For example, if I use say two, seven, five, I'm gonna get another one, or I can use these as complex parameters. And then here I have my matrix triplets. So this shows my matrix triplet has size two, my other matrix triplet has size two. So A is an N by N matrix, A bar is an N by N matrix. And as you can see A here, I'm using the Jordan canonical form and then I'm using my norming constants in this way. But you can choose some other inputs. Uh, now, uh, when I run this, so basically, uh, uh, as I mentioned the procedure, so well, we evaluate these uh, auxiliary constant matrices M and M bar, and in fact, we verify that M and M bar satisfy those linear matrix equations and then uh, evaluate the two matrices gamma and gamma bar. And then we have, since in this case, the Marzenko kernel is separable, I have the explicit solution uh, for the Mar four scalar Marzenko solutions, K1 of XY, K1 bar of XY, K2 bar of XY, and K2 of XY. And then I obtain uh, that quantity, uh, that uh, K1 bar of K1 bar and K2 evaluated at X. And then I do the integration. And then uh, I construct this quantity uh, called E of X. And then uh, I obtain, uh, well, I can express the transmission coefficients, the reflection coefficients are, are all zero. And then I have the explicit formula for the two potentials, Q of X and R of X. In fact, all these formulas are taken from uh, the expressions that I had. And then, uh, for example, I take uh, the key derivative of the two potentials the X derivative. So I use DT for the T derivative. I use D for the X derivative. Here I have the second X derivative. And then, uh, so this is the first uh, line of the integral evolution equation. And this is the second line. So then I can verify that the two integral evolution equations are satisfied. And then uh, I can also evaluate the solution, the so-called your solutions to the linear system. And then I can verify that those linear system, uh, that linear system will also be satisfied by the your solutions. And then I can do all kinds of plots. Here's the absolute value of uh, Q of XT. And then uh, absolute value of R of XT. And then I can just do the animations. So the user, uh, only puts the input by specifying the input parameters. So let's uh, run, uh, I, I'm gonna say evaluate the notebook. So now it's running, but as you know, Mathematica sometimes is not very good doing integrals. Uh, okay, so it's trying to do this integral. Uh, so we're right here. Uh, but uh, in the simplest case, or it, it, it was able to do the evaluation. And uh, in fact, uh, now it's trying to do another integration here. 
So integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity. And uh, in case Mathematica is incapable of doing the integration, then it's all okay to do the numerical integration here. So it's still trying to do the, the integration. So it takes a little bit time for Mathematica to do the integration. Uh, but as I mentioned, uh, if you're comfortable with matrix exponentials, then you don't need to do, uh, you don't need to use Mathematica to express, to convert those matrix exponentials and get uh, everything in terms of uh, uh, polynomials, exponentials, and sine and cosine. Well, as you know, a matrix exponential, namely if you have e to the a matrix, that can be expressed in terms of polynomials, exponential functions, and uh, also trigonometric functions. So it's trying, it's still trying to do the evaluation here. Uh, well, eventually it evaluates because I te tested this. Okay, so it did. And uh, well, it's still running. Let's see where. Uh, Okay. Uh, oh, now every, uh, everything is completed. So let's then look at, for example, okay. So here's the expression for Q of XT. So maybe I, I should just make it a little larger so that you can see it better. Can you see that I have minus 64, this exponential term, e to the arctangent here, but otherwise, I have the exponential and then uh, just polynomials. And here's R of XT. And uh, since I specified uh, kappa and all the uh, P1, P2, so I have this explicit expression in terms of X and T. And as I mentioned, if you use other parameters, then you get solutions explicitly expressed in terms of X and T. And then here, uh, so you can just take all the derivatives and uh, here you have I times uh, Q, uh, the, uh, the T derivative of Q. This is Q sub XX. So, and uh, so the nonlinear equations are satisfied. So here, and uh, uh, so just in case, sometimes Mathematica doesn't simplify in that case, you can just try to do the simplification at some particular X and T values. And let's look at that, for example. So here, I also have the Yost solutions for the linear system. And uh, so the Yost solutions also satisfy the linear system. And uh, so here's the initial uh, absolute value of X of T. Actually, you can just uh, change the domain or the plot range. Well, for example, let's increase this. So, well, here you get some finite. Uh, so the potential does not uh, blow up. And here, uh, for example, you can just change the plot uh, range. Uh, so you can just, uh, so you have this initial uh, potential. So let's look at the animation. So, uh, here I have uh, absolute value of Q of XT. So this is running from minus T equals minus 20 to 20. So the two, there are two potentials and then they come and interact with each other and then uh, they are repelled from each other. Uh, well, you can uh, slow, uh, for example, you can see the interactions or you can just, uh, for example, look at the plot range and increase the time uh, so, and also uh, uh, here uh, you can just check, you can do uh, in this case, you can also evaluate the absolute value of R of XT. In fact, in this case, it turns out that because of my choice, uh, there is a reduction, namely R of XT is the complex conjugate of Q of XT. So you can also check that. Uh, 
so uh, if needed, you can just check things uh, in case Mathematica does not do evaluation explicitly. So you can just do the numerical evaluation. And then you can also, for example, uh, see how the potential, the absolute value of the potential evolves. So here I have the plot of Q of XT at three different T values at minus 20, minus 10, and minus three. So you can, for example, use say, you can change these. Uh, and uh, so, uh, so here I have at T equals minus 20. So the blue shows absolute value of Q of XT. So the green is when T equals zero and the orange is when T equals three. So, uh, so in some sense, uh, it's possible to see all these uh, animations and see how the solitons move. <laughs> well, uh, so I guess I'm gonna stop here uh, and then let me just uh, miniaturize We have this. Nine, nine minutes left. So maybe there are some questions. Yes, yeah, yeah. so I, I will be happy to take uh, any questions. Mm -hmm. And I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for the excellent talk. Uh, Any questions? I have, one, I have one question related to the beginning of the talk. Mm -hmm. yes. Is it possible, please uh, open the slide four, number four. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, you see, perhaps not four, but but doesn't matter. It's enough. Uh, maybe uh, previous slide. I forgot exactly. Uh, this ah. one. Uh, sorry, maybe previous one. Yeah, ah. Yes. Yeah, you see. Uh, it's known that the scattering, the specification of the scattering function does not uniquely determine the potential. But we need also information about discrete spectrum because scattering function describes only properties of continuous spectrum. So there is no, uh, uh, it's not possible to reconstruct uh, the potential V using information only about scattering function. Perhaps you suggest that uh, discrete spectrum is absent. No, here, all I was trying to do just that uh, for uh, uh, the audience, in, ca in case in the audience, there were uh, anyone who had no previous exposure to the scattering or inverse scattering problems. So I would just essentially trying to give uh, an introduction. You're right. So the scattering, the correct scattering data to use, you have the, as Professor Yuko indicated, you have the continuous part and also the discrete part consisting of the bound states. In fact, here I indicated, so here you have the continuous part, mainly the reflection coefficient, here you have the discrete part. Ah, and, he, uh, yeah, yeah, he's a key. So you, you're right that here, I was just trying to demonstrate that uh, basically uh, certainly here in this case, so this should be viewed as the scattering data, not necessarily the scattering, uh, uh, scattering matrix. Uh, certainly, in order to establish a one-to-one -one correspondence, uh, in case the potential has any bound states, you also need to include the bound state information and the bound state information will be in the form of the, say the bound state energies and the norming constants. And yeah. uh, also here, for example, uh, in the DNLS case, so we have the, uh, continuous part of the spectrum and the discrete part of the spectrum. Yeah, and I also understand. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you.